Hey y'all, welcome to Miss Clark's chemistry class. This is the first lesson on a series about acids and bases. This lesson is the properties of acids and bases. We're gonna get the basics out of the way, then we're gonna start talking about more complex issues. So go grab your notes, grab something to write with, and let's get started. So we're gonna start by talking about the properties of acids. Acids are solutions that when you dissolve them in water, they release hydrogen ions into the solution. So they have a high concentration of hydrogen ions. Anything that produces high concentration of hydrogen ions, that's going to be an acid. Since acids do release those positive hydrogen ions, they're going to be electrolytes. Let me show you. So I've got hydrochloric acid here, HCl. My little conductivity tester. And oh look, hydrochloric acid, that is an electrolyte. When you have a compound that dissolves in solution and it disassociates and releases those charges, and those charges help conduct electricity. Acids conduct electricity, they are electrolytes. Another property of an acid, acids taste sour. Are we gonna go taste hydrochloric acid? I would sure hope not. But there are a lot of acidic things that we do eat, like lemon juice, lime juice, citrus, anything citrus that has citric acid and it is going to taste sour. Vinegar, vinegar tastes kind of sour. It's an acid. Another property of an acid is there is always going to be more hydrogen ions than OH ions. More hydrogen ions than hydroxide ions. Acids also have a pH of less than seven. The pH is a scale one through 14 where an acid is anything below a seven. Let's test this hydrochloric acid and see what pH it is. So I've got my pH tester strip my hydrochloric acid, I'm gonna dip it in. Oh, look at that bright, bright pink. Now let's, I'm gonna come a little closer. Hopefully you can see this. We've got one through 12 on this tester. The pinks are going to be very acidic. Then it's going to kind of be this yellow color when you get a little bit neutral. And then it's going to go from green to purple for base. Very clear to see hydrochloric acid is an acid. And it is, gosh, between a one and a two, that's very acidic. If you were to test an acid with a piece of blue litmus paper, litmus paper, these are good for indicators. Now the litmus paper that I used before changed different colors and it gives you a pH range. Red and blue litmus paper, it just tests between acids and bases. It's not going to tell you the pH. Blue litmus paper, when you use it to test an acid, is going to turn red or pink. That shows us that it's an acid. But if we use red litmus paper, nothing's going to happen. So red litmus paper stays red, blue litmus paper turns red. Now there is a natural indicator. If you go to the grocery store and you're looking at the purple cabbage, not the green cabbage, the purple cabbage. If you were to take that purple cabbage, cut it up, put it in boiling water, boil, 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 take the cabbage out, you're left with this purple solution. That is a natural pH indicator. And if you were to drop some of that into an acid, it's going to turn pink. So acids turn a pink color when you mix them with cabbage juice. A chemical indicator is phenolphthalein and phenolphthalein stays clear when you mix it with an acid. Here, let's look. Okay, so I poured a little bit of our hydrochloric acid into the speaker. When I drop the phenolphthalein in, absolutely nothing happens. Phenolphthalein shows no reaction and it stays clear in an acid. Acids also react to metals. To produce hydrogen gas. I have some calcium metal. I know, calcium, it's a metal. Let's get our hydrochloric acid and let's test to make sure that in fact, acids react to metals. Can we see that? Pretty violent reaction. Let me go put that in the vent hood. Acids also react to carbonates. To give off carbon dioxide. So I have some calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate, that really is just crushed up chalk, but I made a solution out of it. Let's prove that acids react with carbonates. <gasps> I didn't think it was gonna have that big of a reaction. Oops, let me clean that up. Okay, so that was properties of acids. Let's talk about properties of bases. Now when bases dissolve in water, they produce hydroxide ions, OH. Again, an ion, so it has a charge. So bases also in an electrolyte. Let's test that out. So I've got NaOH, OH, that means when it dissolves in water, it's going to increase the concentration of hydroxide. I have my conductivity tester here. Sodium hydroxide, that is also a good electrolyte. 
Again, let's remember electrolytes conduct electricity because they completely disassociate in water and release those charges. Bases taste bitter. When I think of foods that are bases, I'm thinking of like leafy greens, spinach, kale, ugh, especially kale, bitter, a lot of lettuce. You know, one year I thought I was gonna grow lettuce in my garden. I love a garden. I didn't really realize there was so many lettuces to pick from. I didn't even really pay attention to the seeds I bought. I just bought some lettuce seeds. And you know what? That was the most disgusting lettuce ever. I refused to eat it because it was so bitter. Bases taste bitter. There's more hydroxide ions than hydrogen ions in a basic solution. Bases have a pH above seven. Remember we said a pH scale was between one and 14. Acids were less than seven. Bases are going to be above seven. So I've got my indicator paper here. I'm gonna dip it in my sodium hydroxide. Oh, and look, completely opposite. Let's look at that example again. This looks like it's about a pH of 10, 10? I think it's about 10. Can you see that? Definitely a base. Okay, let's talk about our litmus paper again. Bases are going to turn red litmus paper blue. So I've got my red litmus paper, I'm gonna dip it in my base. Sure enough, it turns it blue. I've got my blue litmus paper, it just stays blue. A blue litmus paper is gonna show a positive for acid, and a red litmus paper is gonna show positive for base. But it's always good to dip both of them to have that confirmation. So bases, leave the blue litmus paper is gonna stay blue, the red litmus paper is going to turn blue. I always remember B blue base. That cabbage juice that I talked about earlier, if we use that as a natural indicator in a base, it's going to turn green. I wish I had some of that to show you. Phenolphthalein is an indicator for bases. So when we put that in our hydrochloric acid while ago, it didn't do anything. But let's see what happens when it does come in contact with a base. Okay, that is definitely a base. You can see that reaction. You can see that it's indicating for a base. Bases, they do not react with metal and they also do not react with carbonates. We talked about the properties of acids, property of bases. Let's talk about what the properties of neutral is. The most important property of neutral is that the, the hydrogen ions and the hydroxide ions, they're gonna be equal. Water is the most common neutral solution. Neutral solutions are neutral because they have an equal concentration of hydrogen ion to their hydroxide ion. They basically cancel out and if they cancel out, non-electrolyte. Neutral solutions, non-electrolyte. Let's check that out. When we dip this in water, the light bulb doesn't light up because there's equal amounts of hydrogen ions to hydroxide ions. Also, this neutral solution water should have a pH of seven. Now that's pure water and I have tap water here, so let's hope that it shows that pH of seven. Did not change my indicator paper. And when it does not change the indicator paper, we can see that's going to be the seven. Water has a pH of seven, it is neutral. Since it's neutral, it should also have no reaction with the blue litmus paper. And it should also have no reaction with the red litmus paper. Blue litmus paper is gonna stay blue, and red litmus paper is gonna stay red. And purple cabbage juice is gonna stay purple. Now, if we add an acid to a base, we can neutralize them. We just said that a neutral solution is where the hydrogens and the hydroxides equal. And we know that acids produce the hydrogen ion, bases produce the hydroxide ion. So if we add them together, they can cancel each other out. And this is called a neutralization reaction or an acid-base reaction or a double replacement reaction. Am I blasting you from the past? Acid-base reactions are a type of double replacement reaction. So we've got an acid. Here I've used hydrochloric acid reacting with a base. We use sodium hydroxide. Remember acids begin with H's because they increase the solution with hydrogen ions. The base is going to have a hydroxide ion. It increases the solution with hydroxide ions. And this hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion, they're going to recombine to form water. And then the leftovers that we have not recombined yet, sodium and chlorine, they're gonna to come together to make sodium chloride. Sodium is a plus one cation, chlorine is a minus one. That's how we get this one to one ratio with sodium chloride. And really and truly, I know water is a covalent, it's a polar covalent molecule, but really and truly, hydrogen is a plus one, hydroxide is a minus one, and oftentimes when we write these acid-base reactions, we write that HOH, 
And so that also cancels out as well. Now let's come back to this word salt real quick. Now table salt is NaCl. When we think of salt normally we think of table salt and it is sodium chloride. But all year long I keep trying to remind us that in chemistry salt is a generic term and salt is a generic term for an ionic compound. So an acid-base reaction will always yield an ionic compound and water. Or like I said, we just call this generically a salt. I just said that this is an example of a double replacement reaction. Double replacement reaction is a big broad category. If you remember way back when we talked about types of reactions, it's been a while, hasn't it? We said that a good double replacement reaction would produce either a solid precipitate, we just call those precipitate reactions, or it could produce liquid water. And here we go, liquid water. The third thing we said that a double replacement reaction could produce is a gas. We are not gonna get into that at this level of chemistry. Let's look at a couple of these neutralization reactions and practice predicting the products. I know, I'm blasting you from the past. So remember, hydrogen works like a metal and it's going to get with this. And look, H, O, H, that's where our water is coming from. And it doesn't matter what order you do it in. That's going to leave magnesium and chlorine. If I'm looking at my periodic table, I'm remembering that magnesium is a two and chlorine is a one. So that is going to give us MgCl2. Because remember, those charges have to equal zero. Should we dare to balance? Okay, I won't. If we were gonna balance this, we could rewrite water HOH, and that makes it balance so much easier. Phosphoric acid reacting with sodium hydroxide. So again, we're gonna get our H and our OH, that's gonna make water, and then sodium is going to get with phosphate. Sodium is a plus one, phosphate is a negative three, and so we end up with Na3, because it's gonna take three sodiums to cancel out that negative three of phosphate. Why don't you hit pause and try to work the next three? Okay, let's see how you did. So again, we're gonna have water, calcium, that's a two, perchlorate, that's a one, and so we're gonna get CaClO4, two. This next one, I'm giving you the salt and water, and you've gotta come up with the acid and the base. So remember, water is HOH. So if we were to undo this, H is going to get with carbonate. H is a one, carbonate's a two, so it's gonna give us H2CO3. Carbonate's a two, hydrogen is a one. And then that's going to leave sodium to get with hydroxide. They're both ones, so that's just gonna be NaOH. There's our acid, there's our base. Not so bad undoing that, was it? And then our last one, we've got acetic acid, and we've got barium hydroxide. So again, we've got our water, and barium is a plus two, acetate is a minus one, so we're going to get BaC2H3O2, two. Now, I want to make sure and go through some of this vocab right quick, because as I'm thinking about acids and bases, I'm realizing that we've had a lot of vocabulary words during the course of the school year that all pretty much sound the same. Hydrogen is an element on the periodic table, and it's just hydrogen. In fact, it's diatomic, it's going to be H2, it does not have a charge, and it's a molecule. But when I say hydrogen ion, that's just hydrogen with a plus one charge. So we're seeing how those two are different. Hydronium ion. Hydronium ion, I don't think I mentioned hydronium ion in this lesson, but if you continue on with the rest of the lessons, I am going to talk about hydronium ion. So make sure and, and listen for that. Hydronium ion, when we're talking about acids and bases, can be used interchangeably with hydrogen ion. Because let me show you, an hydronium ion is just water with an extra hydrogen ion put onto it. And so we use these terms interchangeably to show a hydrogen ion. We could either just show the hydrogen ion like this, or we show a hydrogen ion like this because we know that H3O plus is just regular O water with an extra hydrogen ion. Okay, now we have hydride. When we say hydride, we know that that hydrogen is in a compound. Like if we said, carbon tetrahydride, hydrate. Remember us talking about hydrates once upon a time? 
Hydrates meant that we had an ionic compound with water trapped inside. And then hydroxide, that's just the hydroxide ion. I wanted to make sure that I just kind of hit on all of those words because they do look and sound very similar. Okay, so that was fun, right? Looking at the properties of acids and bases. Even a little bit of a lab accident. Guess I should have had my goggles on. Okay, well, I hope that helps. Until next time, bye, y'all.